In science, there is no clear measure for success. Is it better to prove a theory wrong or right? I don't know. It's Thursday. I didn't make a video last week, which is which is a failure. So that's that's thumbs down. Thumbs up was I had a paper accepted to a journal, and I submitted another paper to a journal. So last week, finally, things moved forward that I had been uh, struggling to get done for quite a while. A lot of that struggle wasn't that there was any big bottleneck. It was just my own focus and productivity uh, and just load balancing of other things. Uh, I feel like lately I've had a hard time really finding that balance and, and being able to produce at the level that I want to produce at, the level that I know I can produce at as a scientist, as a writer. So it was good to just get some stuff out and just get a little momentum going, I think. So this week I'm trying to capitalize on that momentum uh, and I am working on a proposal. Now it's not due for, it's due in about a month. This will be a big proposal for uh, the NSF, the National Science Foundation, their annual call for big astronomy projects. It's pretty competitive. About one in nine, one in 10 maybe, 10% 10 chance of getting picked. Even having served on some of the committees that choose proposals for various things, we try to do the best we can to pick the most compelling uh, the best argued science, the best crafted proposals, the best broader impact, the best outreach uh, potential. Uh, the truth is, way too much good science is proposed every single time. Once you're in the top, I don't know, 30% of proposals, uh, it's kind of a, a kind of a crapshoot. That's kind of the dark truth about how a lot of this funding works. Failure and rejection is a very regular part of being a scientist, unfortunately, uh, because we live in the real world where money and resources and time are not infinite. So to be honest, I struggle with myself when I'm not operating in an efficient manner. Not that I think that I'm a machine. I am not mad at myself for not having put out enough papers to meet some quota or to, uh, or to conform to somebody else's like rigid robotic standards of what I should be producing. I know people in science who have an expectation that if you're not producing at a certain volume, at a certain level, uh, you're not good enough. I think that's a terrible mindset. People are not robots, especially when the work is thoughtful and creative and takes time. In science, there is no clear measure for success. Is it better to prove a theory wrong or right? I don't know. There are projects I want to do. I have a list on the board behind me and another tucked away at my desk of things that I think are cool or ideas that I'd like to see. And I'm constantly coming up with ideas and projects by talking to people and making friends and having uh, conversations. There just aren't the number of hours in the day that I would like. So beyond this proposal, uh, I've got these papers that I've been wrapping up, which is great, which is exciting. Uh, and that means, by wrapping things up, I get to start new projects. And my next new project, not the only thing I'm going to be doing, but the next thing that I'm going to be spending some time in, I'm starting a SETI project, so the Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence. Also now known as Techno Signatures, uh, I'm going to start a SETI project with uh, ZTF data. So I'm really excited about that. Stay tuned for more. So there you go, a brief update. I haven't forgot about YouTube. I'm just trying to dig deep and find the energy to propose for more science so that I can keep doing my job. Thank you.